start the video recording now, and we are getting ready for the podcast in three, two, one. Welcome to another episode of Business Bros. There we go. Got to get the vibes going. Got to get the juices flowing. Get the energy pumping, and we're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're in the podcast studio with a special guest, but before we get to our guest, we got to give our shout out. So we got some new friends on the Facebook page, Dr. Lee Price, Austin Sautas, Nicole Bader, Kevin McClellan. Um, he actually reached out and we gave him some help on uh, extra assistance for social media. So, you know, shout out to him and Tony, uh, David Antonio, who got a free coaching call for his uh, business. We got Renee Lopez, we got Jacqueline Brock, Rawell, oh sorry, Rowell Ted, and James Muncy, plus some shout outs for productivity, because last, uh, last shout out we gave, we had a shout out for Miss Vicky Sandoval, who's in the podcast studio, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Today's goes out to Mr. Jonathan Fisher, the fearless agent, closed the transaction recently. Whoop! Shout out to the fearless agent and Mr. Tim Barker. You need help, you better text Tim. Good job, guys. Keep it up. Productivity high. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get into our show today. We got a special guest, somebody who we've had her agents on the show quite a few times already. Yeah, DJ, I think this Eddie, is number four Jessica. or five, but yeah. this is the top of the food chain, though. Oh, we're at the top of the food chain now. Oh, boy. You ready? <laughs> we are. We no are. pressure, <laughs> but we got Miss Victoria Sandoval on the show today. The oh, owner of Select Premier Properties. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, Ms. Victoria. So, uh, native, born and raised in Chula Vista, right? Yes. Tell me what that was like. Uh, I love Chula Vista. It, it was great. It was great. Um, grew up there, literally was born on H Street, went to uh, Hilltop Middle, East Lake High School, Castle Park Elementary. So, yeah. Oh, so nice part of the hood, right? You grew up on the, you went to school on the uh, west side and then ended up in high school on the east side. Yeah, I was bused on, from the west side to the east side, so. Yeah, yeah well, uh, don't say that because then we're going to age it. You remember when Eastlake had like nothing over there? Yeah. Right? It's like super developed now. Yeah. But in the in the early days, there was nothing out there. So yeah, I think everybody got bused to Eastlake <laughs> at the <laughs> no, very beginning. <laughs> so uh Tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, uh, you know, where'd you come from? Why'd you get into real estate? I mean, how did it all happen? Um, well, I wanted a career where I knew that my efforts would pay off. You know, the whole nine to five, having a set hourly pay was, I knew it wasn't going to pay the bills and it wasn't going to get me where, it wasn't going to get me where I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, especially being a single mom, I wanted to provide, um, you know, a really good life for my daughter. So I thought, you know, what career can basically reward me based off, off my efforts so real estate was um you know the job for me it's a sales gig yeah right you yeah. you get out what you put in right i mean it's a lot of uh hashtag powerful relationship building mm -hmm. and uh the only way that you become successful in this business if you, is if you've built a lot of powerful relationships right, right. yeah so definitely. let's talk about the first powerful relationship you built uh single mom that's yeah. gotta be tough it was I mean, yeah. you're living in San Diego, probably one of the most expensive cities in the country to live in. Mm -hmm. Single mom, getting your career going. What was that like? Tell me a little bit about growing up or, you know, raising a child like that. Um, I mean, it was challenging, but I was focused. Uh, I knew basically where I wanted to go. And while all my girlfriends were turning 21, going to nightclubs, I was raising a baby, you know, at home. And so, so yeah, it was a lot of sacrifice, but it was worth it in the end. I have a beautiful daughter and... So, yeah. So tell me a little bit more. What's what kind of sacrifices? I mean, career wise. I mean, that's the fun stuff. What about career wise? I mean, were you able to go to college? Were you able to go to school? What was that like? Um, no, I mean, I, right out of basically right out of high school, I, you know, got into banking for a little bit. And that's when I realized, OK, this isn't going to help pay the bills. This isn't going to get me where I you know, need to go. And so that's when I jumped into real estate. So I would say by 20 years old, I was 20. Yeah, 20 years old. I was already in real estate at least in, like well i was on the the real estate side so i was doing loan processing and loan processing and loans and then transition to real estate yeah because uh I, I worked at a bank right out of high school too and that 850 an hour wasn't gonna cut it yeah right that yeah. <laughs> that wasn't gonna get you anywhere yeah. all right so you started off on the loan processing side then right mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about why what, what were you doing that you said okay 
this is what I want to do? Um, well, I, what I liked about processing is I kind of got to understand the, the financial side. So I got into loan processing and then after looking at the, um, the applications and I basically would do everything. The agents would just bring in the applications. I would request all the documentation and then I would see their paychecks. And I'm like, these guys don't do anything. I do all of the hard work. All I got to do is get the client. So that's when I transitioned into being a loan officer. So, you know, I would place ads on like El Latino and um, go to the swap meets on the weekends and wait at five in the morning to get a spot and pass out flyers and door knock. And so, so yeah. And so the nitty gritty hustle. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say that because that's kind of how I got into business myself. I was working at the bank mm -hmm. and we were processing. Um, I, I used to work at the cash vault for the bank. So mm -hmm. money would come in like night drop deposits, all those types of things. Mm -hmm. And we'd sort the cash. So we'd have cash in one bin, change in another, checks would go to a different department. Mm -hmm. And then we'd take the cash and uh, and we'd separate it and then send it out as change orders back to, you know, the companies like Walmart's or Carl's Jr.'s or the branches themselves. Yeah. And one of the change orders I was filling was for the Padres. And I was filling an envelope of money for their road trip. And it was like a three day road trip. And I was looking at the money I was filling. This is just their food money. I was like, that's more than I make in a month. <laughs> it's like I'm in the <laughs> wrong line of work. Yeah. Right. But I mean, that realization, being able to see that, mm -hmm. that opened up my eyes to like, I'm doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you're over here processing loans and you're looking at the, you know, HUD statements at the end and you're like, wait, the agent made how much? Yeah. And mm -hmm. didn't do anything. I had the com I had all the conversations with the clients. I would balance out the 1003s, which for those of you who don't know what 1003s are, they're, you know, the applications and make sure like all the numbers look good. And and uh, yeah. So I did. So when did you finally decide? All right, I'm done with banking. I'm going on to myself. Around what year was that? Mm -hmm. God, year. Make me sound old. <laughs> uh, let's just say I was uh, 19, 20 ish. So I don't know. How old was I? 36 years old. I just, even though. You can't do the math backwards. All right. Well, I was reading, because I was reading some information on you, right? And, and you were talking about how uh, around right before the crash is when you started to get into loans, mm -hmm. right? And so. Oh, yeah. What was that like? I mean, you, you came in just as things were hot. So all I needed to do was fog up a mirror. I got a loan, boom, yeah. and then shit hit the fan and everything changed. Oh, yeah. It was tough. I went from, and this is going to sound super arrogant. I'm not trying to be arrogant, but everybody was making money around that time. You know, mm -hmm. I went from ha having five cars and, you know, a couple houses, two, three houses to, you know, barely being able to get my nails done. It was you know, my husband at the time was like, you know what, we're going to really have to just conserve. And it, it, I feel like it happened overnight. And then mm. all of our clients were calling us like they were all losing their houses. It was very scary. So we did have to make some adjustments, but we pushed through. We, um, I feel like in every market, there's a niche. Mm -hmm. So that's when we transitioned into short sales. Um, you know, we help people with their loan, help them with their loan modifications, refer them to attorneys and and so, yeah. At this point, were you a realtor or were you still on the loan side? So, um, that point, what year was that? 2000, I was a realtor already. By 2007? So, yeah. So, you were you were literally doing short sales. Did the knowledge that you learned in the loan processing help on that section? Oh, it helps tremendously. Because you know, and, and especially now as a realtor, uh, just working with lenders, I already know what questions to ask. And I know what's what's an acceptable answer and what's not an acceptable answer, so they can't kind of like they can't BS you exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, well, sometimes I feel like I know a little bit more than them, so. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. That's Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad thing. That's an experience, right? I mean, yeah. we talk about that when we prepare listing packages for client for uh, for clients, and we're competing as agents. Mm -hmm. We insert some questions that they can ask competing agents. That, you know, making sure that they ask some tough questions to our competition mm -hmm. and we have the answers right there for them. So that way they know if the agent's BSing them. It's important to know if you're being BS, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, otherwise, how are you going to trust the person that you're going to be working with? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's good that you have that experience. Yeah. No. I mean, it makes a big difference. All right. So 2007 comes. There's a huge crash. Market changes. You get to learn all kinds of foreclosure, st foreclosure stuff, mm -hmm. right? How do you see that helping out in today's market? Because we're starting to see some changes. I don't know. It'll, I don't think it'll be that bad. Right. Yeah. But there is going to be some change. There are people who are, who are starting to qualify for homes that probably shouldn't be qualifying. Mm -hmm. Credit scores are getting lower. You know, banking regulations are getting easier. Yeah. So stuff's going to come around the corner. What are you telling your agents now to help them prepare for a market that's coming? You know, it's funny that you, you mentioned this because I just had a training yesterday on short sales. So I want to prepare them way in advance. I told them, you know, I know that 
you're not really familiar with short sales there are a couple out there but just so you know this is what's coming and this is how we're going to handle it and this is these are the steps that we're going to take so they're my agents they're beasts they're amazing they're smart they're go-getters and so they're you know they grasp everything very quickly so they're ready they're armed and they're ready and that makes a huge difference right i mean your team has I mean, when we talk to them, there's a lot of things that they do that that not everybody does. There's a lot of prospecting things that they do, the the relationships that they're building, the influence that they're that they're uh, putting out in their social media. The, I mean, all that stuff like is on point. And I get yeah. the feeling like since it's coming, uh, since it's coming from each of them, mm-hmm. that it's being brought up where they're doing the training, mm-hmm. right? Which is coming from you guys Mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about what you do in the office to make these uh to well to create these beasts yeah (laughs) well uh first of all it's it's easy with you know the younger guys because they're millennials so Mm -hmm. they grew up with computers and smartphones and all that so they're very uh trainable but for the most part we have monday morning meetings uh, my husband, he's a big part of the company. He uh, helps me with the sales meetings, but he does a lot of research and he actually helps with the, because we provide leads to our agents. Um, so he helps me with the uh, the lead side of the marketing and he's always doing research, always trying to stay ahead of the trend. And the nice thing is that we're the guinea pigs because since we have invest such a large amount of money in, in our marketing and we see what works, what doesn't, and then we let them know. So they not only get leads, but they also are now at a level where they can invest in their own leads. And we tell them, okay, this is this is how you target your audience. This is what you've got to do. you got to make these changes. you got to you know post this video and then after follow up with this. Or the, so we're constantly, um, the environment that we're in, I, I really love because they don't see each other as competition. We're a team. As, as far as being a team, we we support each other in in growth, right? Mm-hmm. So, but everyone's an individual agent. So, yeah. It's, tell me a little bit about your lead generation. How are you guys doing that? I can't tell you. Trade if secrets. I tell you, I have to. Kill oh no, dude. That wasn't uh, recorded, right? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Fair, <laughs> Fair enough. Just joking. Fair enough. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I mean, because it, it, that's really what it comes down to, right? It comes. It's not just lead generation. I mean, what you hinted on there was, yeah, we we do some lead generation. We do generate leads. We do help them, mm-hmm. but it also comes down to the follow up, mm-hmm. right? So, share with me a little bit about your process. How does how, if I was to come on your team, mm-hmm. why would I want to be on the Vicky Sandoval? select premier properties Mm -hmm. let's say i know nothing about you Mm -hmm. how you how do you how do you attract agents uh well we our ads have a little bit of information about our company i have videos on there so they have you know an idea of who we are and what we do and what they're signing up for uh during the interview process i kind of weed out the ones that i feel like you know everybody interviews are kind of like first dates i feel Mm -hmm. like people are always going to tell you what you want to hear but until you put them to the test, we implemented a last year. We implemented a sixty-day boot camp, so we kind of get to weed out the ones that say, you know, that that say they want to do they they want to be successful but aren't willing to do the work. Mm-hmm. So in order for them to qualify for leads, we put them through that constant boot cla- boot camp where they have to, you know, do role playing, script practicing. They have to shadow agents. Uh, there's just a ton of things they got to do. Um, so once they do that. Um, then they, you know, qualify for leads and, and we do, we have a lot of different programs. So it's not just lead generation. It's also, we have programs where we teach them how to uh, build relationships so that they can get referral business. So it's kind of, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You kind of have to have like four to five different lead sources, you know, because at the end of the day, if one lead, if that one lead source that you depend on dries up, you're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's perfect because I mean we we train agents to do a lot of the same things. We call it the uh, spokes on a wheel analogy. Mm-hmm. You need to have multiple spokes, just like in like in life in general, right? Yeah. If you're dependent on one source of income and that income dries up, you're in trouble. Right. So if you want to truly be successful in life financially speaking, you should have multiple spokes of income coming in, mm-hmm. and it works the same way with lead generation. You should have multiple spokes of lead generation. I don't care if it's for sale by owners, if it's expired, if it's bought leads, if it's social media marketing whatever it is Mm -hmm. but you need to perfect each one of those lead generation sources so that you know you you when one changes when the when the trend is over in one sense or Mm -hmm. or the market dries up in that other sense then you have another lead source that's not going to dry up that leads are constantly coming in that you're constantly making phone calls right are you guys doing a lot of outbound prospecting uh yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that sort of stuff. Well, the lead, the outbound prospecting. Are are you talking about um, like cold calling or, or just responding to uh, to leads that we receive that are more? Either way, 
Oh yeah. We, Teach me something. We call every, like <laughs> what time is it now? I'm sure I have at least a couple agents on, on the dialer right now. This is actually prime time from four to six. And then we have another, and then we have six to eight. And then we have another, um, I, I would say from eight to 10 AM too. So mm -hmm. agents are always signing up for the Mojo dialer. We upload a ton of leads and they're making maybe three to 500 calls each session. So, and then we have call nights on Wednesdays. So from, which I don't know if you've seen, but we always have food cater. I'm always recording the yummy food. Mm. But uh, from four to eight, everyone's there just crushing the phones, following up with their prospects, with their leads, with their buyers, and, you know, just touching, uh, just reconnecting with their past clients. So it's, yeah, we're, we're big on on constantly being on the phone. So it's, it's a numbers game. So. Oh, that's absolutely true. Because I, you know, I was going to say, there's no way Select Premier uh, Properties makes any of the numbers that it does without having some sort of picking up the phone. And that's kind of what I wanted to hear because, mm -hmm. you know, when you talk to new agents, uh, there's a lot of people, especially with so, with everything being hot right now, like on Instagram or Facebook and marketing and pay-per-clicks and, mm. you know, boosting and whatever, all that stuff's out there. All that stuff is great. Yeah. But it's not the way to grow a real business. Right. Right. So tell me a little bit about, you know, once you started, right, once you got into the business, before your team became where it's at, how did you make it happen how did oh, you boy. become successful yeah. at this what was it do you have a, a a magic pill or was it you know <laughs> like genuine genuine like specific um you know one thing i can i can say is that you know i've worked for all the major corporations like keller williams coldwell banker prudential ashlon berkshire you name them right and one thing i didn't i have noticed is that i was one of the for instance coldwell banker west great company um, but I noticed that, you know, very often there's maybe a hundred agents at that one office, but I would only see maybe 20 there every single day. So I think that's one important thing is I wouldn't leave the office, especially being a single mom. You're, you're just not the type you, you just can't go into the office and say, okay, I called this person. I'm done for the day. No, I would sit there and I think, okay, what can I do next? I already called this client. Okay, I can you know write personal notes. I could post on social media. I could follow up with that lead. I could so I was always fine and never left um, until you know it was at least six seven o'clock. You know, if I had my daughter, you know, come a little bit earlier, come home a little bit earlier. But uh, for the most part, you just you just always got to find something to do. Not just okay, I did the bare minimum and leave. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's an investment. So that's funny because uh, you know it, it's one of those things. I'm trying to dig at you is is like one of did you have some sort of schedule set up for you on a daily basis that you were doing? I mean, you talked a little bit about yeah. what your team does, and obviously there's a schedule today. Yeah. But how did Vicky create her schedule early on? Always make money. Always be proactive and make sure that you're. I was always making sure that I was doing money making activities, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So I was all over the place, to be honest with you. I wasn't just. I didn't have like a set schedule. Um, I was just not allowing myself to leave the office, and I made sure that every minute counted so so then how do you how do you transition that how do you take because your work work ethic is one thing right but then turning it into something that you can show other people to do is a whole different ball game. So in other words scaling is a whole different ball game than just you being an individual mm -hmm. what clicked in what you were doing to turn it into something that is now 20 agents deep yeah it's um you know, just wanting a little bit more of uh, leverage and, and growth and at the same time wanting to also help other agents. I mean, it, I feel like it took me twice as long to get to where I'm at because I didn't have a mentor. Mm -hmm. I had to fail a lot. <laughs> and so just now opening the office and being able to be that mentor for agents, you know, seeing my agents succeed is just so rewarding in itself, to be honest with you. Right? Just Makes all the difference in the world. So proud of them. Right? You're being of service to other people, yeah. just like you do with your clients. What's better? Let me ask you that. What's more satisfying? Because both of them are awesome. Yeah. What's more satisfying? Helping I, someone sell their home, mm -hmm. helping someone buy their home, or helping an agent achieve that success? Because all of them uh, are great. They're all great. But You look. know, I would say maybe helping the agents because... You know, buying and selling a home, although it's rewarding, people can do it multiple times. But this is somebody's livelihood. This is their career. This is you're watching someone go from being, you know, renting a, a, an apartment to building an empire. And just mm -hmm. it, it's just I think it's a lot more rewarding because you're along you're, you're you're with them along the journey. And yeah, I kind of knew you were going to say that one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, anybody who builds a team like that is always looking to 
to help somebody achieve that sort of goal path, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's think about a new agent. So a new agent comes to the show, Mm -hmm. right? You look over and you're like, wow, that reminds me of me when I first got started. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give that new agent so that they don't make the same mistakes you did? Uh, The advice I would give is follow the plan. You know, very often times we hire agents or we've hired agents who just, the easiest thing you can do is pick up the phone. We even have headsets, we even have a dialer. You know, at the end of the day, it's like effortless. You just sit back, someone answers the phone, and you just start talking. You could be out there door knocking. To me, I think the biggest advice is just follow the plan. Do what you're supposed to be doing, what we actually ask you to do, and we have the steps laid out for you. Take advantage of it. But sometimes I feel like we want it more for them than they want it for themselves. So it's really hard to find those Dugs and those Eddies and those Jessicas, you mm-hmm. know, so... But you guys churn and burn a lot of agents that uh, don't have that inner drive, that don't pass the 60-day boot camp? Uh, yeah, they kind of, it's, it's weird because I feel like a- agents kind of fire themselves because they get, they're like, dude, I can't do this. You know, this is just... This is it's not lot. what I signed up for. Well, yeah, it's a, lot, it's a lot of work. But real estate is easy work. You just got to work hard at it. So yeah. some people just don't want to work hard. I like how you put that. It's easy work. You just got to work hard at it. Yeah. Because that's what it really is. I mean, that communication plan, that ability to pick up the phone and actually hold a conversation, mm-hmm. that's a learned skill. That's why you guys have your script your script practice, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, what types of stuff are you teaching them in these scripts to help hold that conversation? Uh, we go over objection, objection handling uh, we go over basically we educate them on you know the different types of loan products that are available so if they do have those questions they can answer the bare minimum um, but yeah so going over objections and just kind of trying to f- getting them to ask why if they say no I'm not interested oh okay well what changed it's from the time that you you know clicked on our ad to you know f- to now to the mm-hmm. present And then if it's like credit, okay, well, then we have a solution for that. If it's like income, okay, well, well, what's your income? We might have options available. We have the down payment assistance program. We have, so going over all those objection handling um, scenarios is is very helpful. You ever come across agents that, uh, you know, you, they get on the phone and they're willing to get on the phone, right? They hop on the phone and they talk to somebody and the minute they hear something like, Hey, you know, you're interested in buying? No, no, no. And they're like, okay, thank you. Bye. And hang up. Like, how do you get that agent to keep the person on the phone to, you know, to because that's really the point, right? When you're on the phone, it's to, you know, get that that engagement going. What are you looking for Mm -hmm. uh, initially when you call them? Actually, I was going to answer the question for you, but I want to hear what you got. So what do you what are you trying to get across? Uh, What are you trying to get from the the, uh, person on the other line? What are you trying to get your agent to get from them when they call? Well, just finding out the reason why before they hang up, because they are quick to hang up if they're not interested, just mm-hmm. kind of not letting them hang up and just you start talking and you start asking questions and they kind of, they get startled and they're, they start answering. They're not, it's unexpected. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So you're, you're just looking for a conversation. Are we trying to set appointments? What are we trying to do? Oh yeah. So basically, yeah, we're trying to set an appointment. So if it's, if they ask the client, you know, why, why aren't you interested any longer? And they say, okay, well credit, well, you know what we have? a lending specialist that offers free credit counseling you know they can run a credit simulator and tell you give you a roadmap they, they'll give you a step-by-step guide as to where you're at now what steps you need to take to get to where you need to be so that you can buy in the time frame you want to buy so so yeah so and that's the thing we're, we're more of a real estate hub and we explain that to people we're not um it's not just like do you if you qualify you either buy or you don't you qualify you don't know if if you're not ready yet we'll hold your hand and we'll guide you until you are ready we're, we're nurturing the client throughout the process very few of our clients uh, buy now and for the most part most of our clients that are actually in escrow are clients that we've been nurturing for six months to to up to two years and that's one of those things right when you make initial contact with the client it doesn't necessarily mean that 45 days 45 days later you're going to get a check mm-hmm. for this client right oftentimes when you talk to a client and you actually get them to stay on the phone for a little while yeah. it could take six months nine months a right. year before that person is actually ready or in escrow or even closing right so how yeah. you know so what, what are you emphasizing to your agents as far as filling the pipeline why is it important to always have you know, why is it important to always be picking up the phone every single day? Right. What are they looking for? Um, so, you know, one, one thing I do tell my clients is, you know, only 2% are going to buy now. And when we do hire a new agent, we let them know, look, you're probably not going to convert a deal or close a deal for the first four to six months. You got to build that pipeline because, again, only 2 two to 3% buy now. The rest you got to nurture. Most people think 
they want to buy a house they think oh it, it's a good idea to buy a house so they go online and they click on an ad but they're not ready yet so mm-hmm. but that's the that's the perfect lead to nurture because you're the first person they talk to you're their resource you're that real estate hub for them if you help them get their credit score up if you're sending them listings and informative pieces you're, you're going to be the person that they go to when they are ready to buy six months to a year down the road they've already seen your face heard your name multi- over a dozen times and they do say that you know a person has to see you at least 12 or see your ad or your name at least 12 times for them to actually remember who you are yeah, and that makes so. a huge difference this is why it's uh important for the agent to pick up the phone to be in front of that client mm-hmm. you're 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 basically if i heard you correctly you're doing two things you're building a relationship mm-hmm. and then since only two to three percent are going to close well if you call 10 people that means that one or two are going to close for the year yeah. but if you call a thousand people yeah. right or i'm sorry 100 people then one or two are going to close mm-hmm. if you if you call a thousand people if you call five thousand people your two to three percent number increases Mm -hmm. and it's a numbers game Mm -hmm. you have to make the phone calls you have to fill your pipe and if you know that this person's going to be ready six months nine months a year from now well what are you doing tomorrow because then a year from then Mm -hmm. you're going to have somebody and what are you doing the next day and a year from that day and it's a matter of just continuously filling the pipe so that it drips out clients right on a regular basis yeah that about right? Yeah. That about sums up it. what you're doing? Are you in real estate? Uh, maybe a little bit. Maybe <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> All right. How are we doing on this Facebook feed? I see you chomping away over there at the bit. Oh, man. We got so many people on here. Uh, big shout outs to, mm-hmm. let's see, I'm just going to start from the bottom and work my way up. Mm-hmm. Ashley Williams, Heather Kearney, Philip Morgan, Michael So, Robert Rodriguez, David Mercado, Austin Sautas, All these Monica people. Perez Peters, Jennifer Rosette, Jenny from the Block. Jenny from the <laughs> Block. Uh, Christina Rodriguez, Jesse Wright, Sean Cahan. I could go on and on and on for a little bit here, but Vicky um, is popular. What can we say? Thanks, yeah, she is. Guys, thanks for tuning yeah, in. Big shout yeah. outs to everybody who's uh, watched and you know. Oh, dude, a thing or super two. appreciated. All right, let's uh, let's ask you one more question. You've achieved a pretty good level of success. How are you giving back to the community? Oh boy. Um, well, once a year, we we try to. We try to um, volunteer at Father Joe's. Mm-hmm. Usually what we'll do is we'll adopt a family as well. So uh, a lot of people who are friends with me on Facebook, they'll vouch for... Basically, I'll post on Facebook and I'll ask you know, if anyone knows of a family in need. Mm-hmm. Uh, one year, we, uh, we had a, a family that we adopted and it was three little girls uh, who, whose mother was murdered and... Um, they were living with their with their grandparents. The grandfather was basically going blind. He couldn't drive at night, um, so he he's the one that would take them to school. And they were in a little one one bedroom duplex. So we asked, "What do you need?" And the things that they would that they requested was like basic things. Well, not basic things, but like they, the little girl, one of the little girls needed a like a sleeping bag for sixth grade camp, like. Just yeah, the yeah. necessities that it was just really sad. But anyhow, um, we got a bunch of people together. Everyone donated. The fa- the the um, the grandfather. We got him a new cane. Uh, we bought them a new you know couch and love seat. And so it was really nice to see everybody you know come, come together. together and just what they wrote on the list was. I mean, we exceeded that. People were so wanted to help them so much that they just bought all these extra things. So it was a great Christmas for them and. Yeah, so we really like adopting a family. Uh, the whole orf- orphanage thing was something that we do want to start doing in Mexico, but it's I feel like it's very difficult to kind of cross the border and do have all the all things that. taken yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't so yeah, but this last year we went to uh, we fed the homeless. You know, the whole team, and it was it was a great experience and it's very humbling. You know, it's it's yeah, it's definitely one of those humbling experiences because yes, we are in a business where we get to help people. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we get the opportunity like this to help people on a whole different level, yeah. to fill your heart with joy because you're able to bring somebody who might not have had some of the basic necessities, the ability to enjoy. I mean, you never know. This girl could grow up and remember that sleeping bag or those yeah. little things and be the person and be the person who sh- changes the world. Yeah. Right. You don't know. the You don't know the effect that your generosity will have. I mean that ripple effect is huge. Yeah, we were even invited to her to their baptism and their uh, communion. And so you're changing lives. Yeah. You're changing I'm lives. Trying. So, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna give you a few minutes here at the very end um, to talk to the camera. How do people get a hold of you if uh, 
if they would like to work with you? Um, you guys can call me at 619. I think my number is on the screen, right? Yeah, you can point okay. down. Boop, boop. Okay, call this number. Or go to my Instagram. <laughs> I'm always responding uh, to my messages on social media. Uh, so, yeah. Or Perfect. you can email me. Yeah, and you can rely on Vicky, right? Rely on Vicky, yes. That's right. <laughs> All right. So lastly, we got to have you tag somebody. Oh, my husband. Oh, easy look. He's that? Boom. <laughs> Snap. I knew exactly who it was going to be. Yeah. Antonio Banderas? Yes, he's my little Antonio Banderas. He has an exotic, <laughs> sexy Mexican accent. All right. <laughs> Abel, you've been tagged. I don't know you're going to go home and tell him. Yeah. Oh, I already told him. I'm like, it's. I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no fear dude no fear yeah awesome all right well ladies and gentlemen uh thank you vicky for being on the show thank you for having appreciate you coming down i know it's kind of a almost like a weird weather day where it wants to rain doesn't want to rain i don't know it's it's weird remember me when you guys are like at the top remember you know just don't forget about the little people yeah don't you 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 guys are already at the top are you kidding me we're chasing you right exactly (laughs) you guys are gonna howard stern better watch out (laughs) (laughs) well appreciate that by the way if you guys have uh thinking about getting on the show you don't have to be in real estate to be on the show so if you got a business out there you want to uh be promoting or talk about on the program let us know your story hernan at csfirst.com or my cell number Thanks, Tim Harris, 619-884-4915, 619-884-4915. You can, uh, for all your insurance needs, james at csfirst.com or his phone number, 619-884-0045. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, you can follow us on social media at Business Bros Pod. That's all we got for you guys today. Peace. Bye-bye. And I'm out. <laughs> See? That was fun. Facebook. Thank you, Facebook. We love you. Love you, Facebook. Thanks. Appreciate you. Thanks for big, the shots. Just kidding. Big shout outs <laughs> to everybody who joined on, man. Uh, that was a good crowd. Good crowd today. Appreciate yeah, but, everybody. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. We love you. And by the way, we might have one more show today because I'm sure, I'm pretty sure Eric's going to want to hop on the live. So. All right. All right. We'll so do here it. we go. Number two today. Whoop, whoop. Actually, number three. Oh, yeah. It would be number three. We had three interviews today. Wow. Can you believe that? Wow. Those are good questions. You were made me, making me think. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> What do we, what? What? Huh? Huh?